I'm recording the meeting. Hello, I, I, hi, excuse me. Hi, everyone out there. Um, just starting off tonight's primary um, forum for the Democratic primary. Uh, we're just letting everyone into the room and we are going to get started in just a moment. I'm going to uh, just sit tight. Um, all right. Um, okay. I'm still, uh, hold on, I'm still admitting people in. Uh, so I just, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm Scott Pickering. Uh, here in, uh, we are meeting in the Barrington Public Library in a format with uh, members of the League of Women Voters and with our candidates for tonight. I'm going to start by turning the program over to Patricia Sylvester from the League of Women Voters, who will start off our introduction. Go ahead, Patricia. Welcome to the Democratic Candidate Forum for Senate District 11, Senate District 32, and the Barrington Town Council. These forums are happening on Zoom and being recorded. They will be available on YouTube and Facebook between August 17th and primary election day, September 13th. The League of Women Voters is a grassroots education and advocacy organization. We conduct voter registration drives and candidate forums like this one. We also study issues, reach consensus positions on those issues, and then lobby to promote them. The League is nonpartisan. We never endorse any candidate or party. We welcome new members, both men and women. Our co-sponsor, East Bay Media Group, publishes local newspapers. You've already met our moderator, Scott Pickering, the general manager. The first forum is for Senate District 11, with Democratic candidates Linda Rujafusa and Matthew Chappelle. The second forum is for Senate District 32, with Democratic candidates Pamela Laria and Susanna Holloway. The third forum is for Barrington Town Council, with Democratic candidates Anthony Errico, Kathleen Berard, and Braxton Medlin. The candidates have already chosen members to determine speaking position. After they introduce themselves, 30 seconds each, the moderator will ask six to eight questions. These questions have been submitted by the public, the candidates, and the co-sponsors. Scott has chosen the questions to ask. The candidates have one minute to answer each question. After that, if candidates want to comment further, they can raise their wild card, which gives them an additional 30 seconds. Each candidate has eight wild cards, which can be used to extend the opening statement, to comment further on issues raised, or to lengthen the closing statement. The timing of the forum will be done by Susan Estrix and Joanne DeVoe. When a speaker has only 15 seconds left at this time, the timers will raise a yellow sign. When the time is up, they will raise a red one. When the speaker sees red, he or she can finish the sentence. But if another sentence is started, he or she will be charged a wild card. Linda Poole would keep track of how many wild cards have been used by each candidate. Now I'll turn the forum over to stop. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm still uh, doing some technical setup here, but I think I think we're okay. I'm just asking uh, some of the audience to confirm that we can see everything properly. Uh, it looks okay. um, but if I can call on um, Gina Bay, would you um, would you unmute yourself and just let me know that you can see properly what's happening? Hi, Scott. Yes, I can see. Right. I'm sorry. I just, it looks different here. I just wanted to confirm. Thanks so much. Sorry. Sorry to call you out. <laughs> That's okay. All right. All right. So we're going to start with our opening statements in the Senate District 11 race. Uh, first, Linda Ujafusa will have an opening statement of 30 seconds or longer if she chooses. All right. Thank you. Um, many thanks to the League of Women Voters for inviting us here tonight. My name is Linda Ujifusa. 
And I have knocked on many, many doors in District 11 to learn about constituent concerns and questions. And I believe I have the experience, skills, and work ethic needed to best represent District 11 at the State House. I have not just listened to constituent concerns, I have acted on them. On the town council in Portsmouth, I've helped ensure that safety audits were conducted on East and West Main roads. And I wrote the resilient roadie uh, application to the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank. I, my background and actual record of public service make me the only candidate qualified to hit the ground running. So learn more about me at ujifusa number four ricom And feel free to reach out to me through email or uh, by phone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matt Chappelle. Uh, thank you. I want to start by thanking the League of Women Voters and Scott, of course, for, for moderating the debate. Um, my name is Matt Chappelle. I'm running for the uh, Senate District 11 seat, being vacated by Jim Seveny. I'm proud to share that uh, Jim Seveny has offered his support and his endorsement for me to uh, fill his seat. I look forward to discussing uh, the issues facing our community tonight with, uh, with Ms. Ujafusa. And I look forward to earning each of your support and hopefully your vote in the upcoming Democratic primary. Thank you. All right, we're going to move to a round of questions. And for the audience's sake, I'll just explain. I'm going to ask a question, uh, which will be answered by each candidate for up to a minute or longer if they choose. Um, and, then, um, and then they have time to rebut if they would like. And we're going to go through a series of six to eight of those questions. So. The first question begins with Ms. Ujifusa, uh, and that question is, what do you see as the most pressing upcoming issues for your district? Right, so, I mean, knocking on the doors and listening to people, it is clear that the major issues uh, focus on climate change threats and economic stressors, such as high housing costs and um, the uh, high cost of healthcare. And I believe that those will be the priorities that we'll be facing in the state house. And I have the qualifications and the experience to help address those. Uh, I have been working um, as a, the head of a 501c3 uh, that's advocated Medicare for all single payer for several years. When I started, people asked, what is single prayer? And now we have, we have passed a Senate, Rhode Island Senate resolution in support of Medicare for all single payer at the federal level. And we have the support of uh, the federal three quarters of the federal delegation, Senator Reed and Congressman Cicilline and Langevin. So I take on the issues that I believe are important to our constituents and I am able to build cons uh, to build coalitions and get things done. Thank you, Mr. Chappelle. Thank you. Um, so it's hard to pinpoint you know, one or even a few issues that that are facing our, our, our communities are facing. I think, um, you know, like Mr. Ujafusa said, uh, one of the main issues is affordable housing and housing affordability, which I think are two mutually exclusive issues. Um, but the truth of the matter is that young families cannot afford to live in our communities and it's a cycle that we cannot sustain. Climate change, we live in the ocean state, of course, the climate and having access to our waters is a huge issue for our our communities and we need to work to enact policies that are going to address those uh, challenges. And finally, I think a uh, main issue in our community is uh, mental health, specifically with the youth and adolescents of our community. I graduated high school in 2009. And if you would have told me back then that nearly 12 classmates that I went to school with or who walked the halls after me would have been deceased from either suicide or substance use issues, I would have told you that you were crazy. But it is uh, the reality of our world today and we need to work uh, endlessly to, to fight that. Thank you. All right, we're gonna to move to a new question. Um, and sorry to interrupt the flow here. I, I probably should have told the audience also that we are, um, we are using a, a new form of technology here um, where we are in a room and when someone speaks, the camera finds them and, um, and shows them on the screen. So there, occasionally there could be a one second delay before the camera finds the voice, but it, it, it it's working and it's finding you, so don't worry. You're on, you're on camera, um, but just so you know, it's we're uh, we're not here before a live audience. We're here in a room with uh, a small group of people and uh, using a, a pretty nice form of technology, courtesy of the Barrington Library. All right, next question begins with Mr. Chappelle. Do you believe there should be any changes to the current Rhode Island gun laws? Um, 
so yes, and I believe that I have a unique perspective on this issue uh, against any other candidate for the seat. Uh, I am from a generation, I was eight years old when the Columbine shooting happened in Colorado. And I'm from a generation that had to wake up the morning after the next gun shooting and face the terror of going to school and praying that we weren't next. I am proud and honored to be uh, endorsed by the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence, as well as um, being a candidate of distinction for Moms in Man Action. And if elected, I look forward to working with these organizations, as well as so many others around the state of Rhode Island, and fighting to make sure that we continue to address common sense gun laws and fight to enact those so that we can help better protect our communities. Thank you. Ms. Ujifusa? Yes, thank you so much. I'm also uh, a common, uh, Moms Demand Action Common Sense candidate. Um, and I believe that I have a record of trying to uh, pursue common sense gun uh, safety laws. And what we saw happen in the last uh, cycle of legislation was that three bills passed and they had the support of the Rhode Island uh, Police Chiefs Association. And what that tells me is that there is going to be an overlap in um, the interests of people who are considered conservative and people who are considered uh, not so conservative. And that, that kind of coalition building is something that I feel I'm able to do because I've had experience talking to conservatives about what might be perceived as um, left-wing ideas. And what I'm finding at the doors is that they, there is that Venn diagram of overlap and I believe that we can have that happen with future gun laws. And I will make sure I have experience writing legislation and I will make sure that I will get on this to proceed with further gun safety laws. Thank you. All right, next question. It begins with Ms. Ujifusa. What could the General Assembly do to bring more jobs to Rhode Island? Right. Well, I think, um, first of all, our state's approach to economic development has to stop focusing on corporate welfare uh, that just gives large corporations uh, tax breaks or cash without proof that there's actually uh, a positive effect for Rhode Islanders. Um, we need to follow what other states have done and invest in public infrastructure and create an educated workforce and pass legislation that does more than just benefit special interests. And we should stop assuming that privatizing government functions benefits Rhode Islanders. Um, we have to make sure we audit the private companies that are uh, working for our state. In addition, we should reverse, um, we should make sure that monies, uh, that the school, uh, school funding formula, which is up after 10 years, is rewritten in a way that adequately funds our public education system uh, because it, it is not currently doing the job. Mr. Chappelle, same question. Um, so I think obviously it's very important to bring uh, more jobs for our community. Um, the workforce throughout COVID took a huge hit and small businesses are suffering because of it. We need to help enact policies that is going to incentivize people to come back to work. There are jobs available. We need to incentivize people to come back to work. That being said, we also need to provide more jobs in our state. I think um, helping promote uh, you know, uh, future development, helps address a few issues. It creates more jobs. It addresses the affordable housing and housing affordability issue by increasing our housing stock. And I think that you know, that is one way that we can work together to bring more jobs and address more than one issue at one time. Thank you. All right, next question uh, begins with Mr. Chappelle. And I think you mentioned this in your opening statements, but we'll revisit the topic. So we have clear evidence of climate change all around us. Do you believe the General Assembly is doing enough to think long-term about climate change? What would you try to accomplish if elected? So I, I think that Rhode Island in the past few years has become kind of a staple in, in climate change. And that's something that we should wear with a badge that we should wear with pride. Um, I think the, the act on climate took big steps towards a long-term solution by setting uh, the 100% uh, renewable energy goals. But what's important now is that we enact policies that not only help us meet those goals, but that we can surpass those goals. Whether that be you know, allowing uh, renewable energy sources to be more accessible or you know, policies that are gonna cut down our carbon footprint, um, all of these, you know, 
climate change is a global issue, but Rhode Island, the smallest state in our nation, is taking huge steps towards that solution. And we need to continue to enact policies that are going to, again, help us surpass those, those goals. Ms. Ujifusa. Yes, so the act on climate was certainly a uh, important step towards um, helping us deal with climate change. Uh, I think that it can be improved. Uh, specifically, we need to make sure that the, uh, the requirements that are going to be set up by the administrative agencies in the state uh, set goals that are as aggressive as possible. And we also have to make sure that there are enforcement mechanisms uh, that are put into place to make sure that if there is failure to meet the goals, that there are consequences. So um, I do believe that uh, Rhode Island must uh, take steps to do basically three things. One, we should help reduce the carbon footprint, but we also need to make sure our communities are protected um, and ready for the emergencies, which will no doubt arise, as well as uh, invest in resiliency projects. Thank you. New question. Uh, we'll begin with Ms. Ujifusa. Do you support a woman's right to choose her reproductive health care, including the right to have an abortion? Yes, uh, I'm 100% pro-choice. Uh, I, what I've been working on in that respect is the Medicare for all bills at the state and federal level. They, uh, well, at the federal level, at both levels, they ensure all reproductive health care is funded. And at the federal level, they ins it ensures that the Hyde Amendment is overridden. And I think that in addition to simply saying that you are in favor of a woman's right to choose, it's important to work on funding that. I was also at someone who testified in favor of the EACA this year. Um, and so I have a strong track record of showing up and walking the walk as well as just talking the talk. And um, so that is, my, uh, that is my record of supporting uh, choice for women. Mr. Chappelle. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I. Uh, like Linda, I am 100% pro-choice. I am proudly uh, endorsed by Planned Parenthood, and uh, I will always stand beside women and fight for their rights, their reproductive health care rights, and their right to an abortion. I think uh, it is so important that we not only fight for these rights, but for the accessibility of these rights, and that includes fighting to make sure that the Equality and Abortions Care Act gets passed. And if elected, that is something that I uh, would be honored to help get on the floor and, and help get passed. Yes, please. I, I would just like to add that obviously what is a tremendous concern to us all is what's coming down from the Supreme Court. The, the recent uh, decision overturning Roe v. Wade um, it, and also other decisions uh, affecting environmental protection and gun safety laws um, LGBTQ rights. It's something that we need strong leadership at the state level to fight against this, the SCOTUS decisions. And I am the candidate who was able to make that leadership happen. Thank you. All right, new question begins with Mr. Chappelle. In the 2022 session, the House of Representatives unanim unanimously voted in favor of a shoreline access bill, which would clarify citizens' rights along the shores of Rhode Island. The Senate adjourned without considering the bill. Are you familiar with the, bo the bill and do you have a position on it? So uh, I am familiar with the bill. I actually uh, had the chance to discuss uh, the bill with uh, Representative Corcoran, who was uh, instrumental in getting it through the House and unfortunately fell short in the Senate. Um, we live in the ocean state, not because, not only because of the beautiful views, we live here so that we can have access to the ocean and enjoy the ocean and the shoreline. I think it is important that everybody have that right to access the shoreline, not just those fortunate enough to live on the water. And if given the opportunity, I would uh, stand beside Representative Corcoran and the other members of the House to make sure that it does get on the Senate floor for a vote. Thank you. Ms. Ujifusa. Yes, so uh, Representative Corcoran is actually my representative, and I've also discussed this with her, and she has had put together such an amazing um, amount of uh, expertise to address this issue and try to come up with a prudent, common sense way of determining what is accessible to the public. And it is uh, certainly will be one of my priorities to work with her as a senator to make sure that this passes in the next legislative session. Great. Thank you. 
Next question begins with you, Ms. Ujifusa. How do you envision your role in the Senate? Representing your district, representing your party, representing all Rhode Islanders, or somehow balancing all of those interests? Well, I mean, all of those interests, um, if you, again, use my Venn diagram analysis, are overlapping. Um, however, it's my constituents that I have to represent first, and I will listen to them, and I will make sure that I pursue the goals that they uh, lay out for me as priorities. Um, as a town council member, every year I set up a meeting with our state legislators to make sure that they understood what the local uh, municipal uh, staff and um, constituents wanted, and I will continue to do that um, at, when I am a senator. And I do think that it's important to uh, make sure, I do think that there is an overlap. They are not in conflict necessarily, but it, we, it is when we find those overlapping areas that we are able to move forward. And I am used to doing that and I will continue to do that. Mr. Chappelle. If I could just ask you to repeat the question, yeah. I was in the middle of the water spot. That's okay. <laughs> which I appreciate. No, no, no. Uh, how do you envision your role in the Senate? Is it representing your district, representing your party, representing all Rhode Islanders or somehow balancing all of those interests? Um, so I think to a degree, you know, it, it is compiling all of those interests, but again, the most important thing, we're not being elected by the state of Rhode Island. We are being elected by the members of District 11, and we are hopefully going to the state house to fight for their values and make sure that their voice is heard at the state house. So my top priority would be with meeting with local leaders to find out what it is uh, specifically that we need to address as a community, and then we're going on to work with state leaders to make sure that we come up with pragmatic solutions to uh, to meet these needs of our communities. And um, you know, it's, it's all too common today to have politicians go up to the state house and speak past each other, which is the it's just halts progress. We need politicians that are going to speak with each other and work together and find pragmatic solutions to our issues. Thank you. All right, we're to our final question. Um, it went really fast, <laughs> you can't believe it. Um, you guys haven't argued enough to actually make it go longer. Um, so next, last question before we move to closing statements. Sure. Do you believe, oh, I'm sorry, and we begin with um, Mr. Chappelle, yes. Uh, do you believe charter schools have a positive or negative impact on public edu education in Rhode Island? And then depending on your answer, would you support the expansion of charter schools in the state? So I think that the main priority for any funding that we get as a community should be pressed towards our public schools to allow access to everybody to have an, uh, have an education, uh, a high value education in buildings that are safe and comfortable to learn in. I think that charter schools kind of run a parallel competition with that goal. Um, so I'm not necessarily for the expansion of charter schools. I'm trying to get rid of charter schools that already exist that uh, you know, seems contradictory to the overall education of, of our community. But um, I think it's important that we aim our funding at our public schools that are best going to help the members of our community and get them the education that that everyone should have the right to. Ms. Ujifusa. Right, uh, I am uh, not uh, in favor of funding charter schools uh, because frankly, it's drawing money away from our public schools. All three of my children went to Portsmouth Public Schools. I'm a public school graduate and um, I don't believe that it makes sense to have this sort of stratified system um, when I went to school, the rich kids and the poor kids were all in the same school. And so it, it doesn't make sense for us to be having different pools of money. Um, also, I understand that there are inner city schools that are served by decent um, uh, charter schools. I think that we need to amp up how the uh, public schools are being funded and run rather than trying to set up a whole new system. I'm also opposed to spending uh, public monies on private institutions uh, that are taking the place, privatizing education. I think that's wrong and that we need to make sure that public education and our teachers are supported. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, go right ahead. So I would just add, I, I think there's you know, a clear distinction. They're called private schools and public schools for a reason and public funding should be used to fund those public schools. I do think there's a lot that needs to be done with the funding of public schools, including 
know, addressing the, the um, funding formula to make sure that we have modernized buildings and modernized curriculum so that we can have our students, you know, the best prepared once when they leave our institutions. <clears throat> um, as for the public school teachers, they need the resources um, endorsed by NEARI and uh, would fight to, uh, for their you know, employment and to make sure that they have the funds that they need to offer uh, quality education. Great. All right, that ends our rounds of questions. Uh, and look, did you have anything else you want to say in charter schools? No, no, I'm you sorry. Should? Okay. You're just primed for your closing statements. Fine. All right. So one thing I may not have made clear to the audience, um, each candidate has a series of eight wild cards they could have used at any time during our dialogue. They didn't use most of them, so they both could have very, very lengthy closing, <laughs> closing statements should they choose. Um, Ms. Ujifusa, you could have your 30-second closing statement plus another uh, three minutes of time. Oh, so, so you could have three and a half minutes to, uh, um, to conclude your remarks tonight. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess um, I, I would just like to say that um, it's, it's a privilege to run for office here. And I also feel that the communities I will represent have just a tremendous um, beauty and historical significance and just community feeling that I would be honored to represent. And I think that my, the thing that separates me from all my other opponents um, is that I have a very long record of public service. I've been on the Portsmouth Town Council for six years. Uh, four of those years, I was vice chair. Um, I've also was the chair of the Equidnick Land Trust. Uh, prior to that, I was, uh, well, I'm also the, uh, the head of the 501c3 uh, that uh, advocates for Medicare for all single payer. And I've also been uh, active in the Rhode Island uh, Democratic Women's Caucus. And so I feel like I have experience working with a lot of organizations and individuals across the state and building coalitions. And you know, people ask me, how do you get uh, any politician to listen to you, especially leadership? Well, the answer is, and this came to me from a very experienced uh, legislator, Elected officials listen to their constituents, period. They don't care that I am some sort of friend to them uh, as a single senator. Politicians listen to their constituents. And so when you want to advocate for a position, what you need to do is go out and gather grassroots support of constituents in the various uh, districts to convince their legislators of the position that needs to be taken. That's what we've done in, for various issues that I've worked on, and it has worked. Um, I think that there is a myth that somehow being friendly uh, with certain people, uh, who are politicians, is, is actually the way um, things get done. I think people, first and foremost, listen to their constituents. And so I have the experience to work with uh, community groups and also individuals who are working on uh, the issues that we all care about to advocate uh, properly to make certain laws passed. And I will say about endorsements that, you know, if you look at where my signs are, and if you go to my website and click on endorsements, what you will see are a lot of people who have been working with me on various issues ranging from racial justice to historical preservation to mental health uh, issues. Um, and I know that, um, my opponent has said that he very much wants to work on mental health issues. And I will say I've already been working on mental health issues. I've had um, conversations with uh, uh, Attorney General Narona about parity laws. Anyone who's been doing uh, mental health knows that we have trouble meeting those laws, which require that you have an equal um, ability to access mental health as you do with physical health. Well private insurance companies in Rhode Island were not meeting that requirement. They were violating that requirement. And because the enforcement of those law parity laws were not uh, in the hands of our attorney general, but instead in the hands of the Office of Health Insurance Commissioner, they ended up not having them give their uh, penalties or not being penalized properly. They ended up having to allowing them to make donations to the Rhode Island Foundation. So I just feel that I've been working on the very issues, all the issues that have been identified and I can continue to do so effectively at the state level. Perfect, thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Chappelle, you have closing statements up to four minutes if you choose, and the floor is yours. Thank you. I'll try to keep it to 2.30. Um, what I think that our state needs is the perspective of a different generation. Like I said before, I was eight years old when the shooting in Columbine happened, and my generation knows all too well the terror of going to school and praying that we're not next. My generation also knows the struggles that come along with crippling student loan debt and the inability to find affordable housing in our communities. Young families cannot afford to live in our communities today. And I will be a voice that will fight for policy, that will make sure that the dream of raising your family in the community that you were raised in becomes a reality again. I will also be the voice, as, as uh, my opponent stated, that will um, stand beside our youth that is struggling with mental health issues and substance use issues and make sure that they have the resources in place that they need, that those resources are readily accessible and available to them. And I think most importantly that we do proper community outreach that lets them know that they no longer need to struggle in silence and that their community stands with them and it's okay to ask for help. I'll stand with all women, all women and fight for their rights uh, for their reproductive health care rights. I will stand with the LGBT community and fight for their rights because the reality of it is that the way our Supreme Court is going, that those rights are probably next on the chopping block. And I will always stand with those most at risk of waking up tomorrow with fewer rights than they had yesterday. What I think separates me from my other components is my ability to find solutions to the issues that we are facing, to work with others and represent my constituents the same way I represent every client that has ever walked through my door in my law practice and every time I step into court. You need to work with others, and not speak past them, to find pragmatic solutions, and I am the best candidate that can do that up at the State House. I hope to earn your support and your vote in the upcoming Democratic primary, and I know that together we can be successful. Thank you. All right, thank you both. That concludes the forum for District 11. I, and one thing I'll note for the audience I, I re was reflecting on is they were giving their closing statements. You can't see it, but in the middle of the room is this little little device. And um, as they're delivering their, their deep thoughts, they're staring into like a tiny piece of technology, wondering, is anyone out there listening? So there is an audience listening. This is going to be, uh, it's being recorded. It will be posted and shared. Um, but you did a good job star okay. staring into the center of I the table. I always feel like I need to look around the room. <laughs> um, staring into the center <laughs> of the table and, and keeping your thoughts together. So thank okay. you both. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. We're going to bring in uh, a new set of candidates and the audience just sit tight for a couple minutes. We will be back in a moment.